Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So uh, in this video I will show you uh, a little bit how I have everything configured on my computer right now. Um, so uh, before I begin I just want to tell you that this is not a tutorial or anything in that sense. This is just a showcase um, and then you can do whatever you want with it. <clears throat> I will have some links in the description to some resources um, uh, to things that I use on my system, but but uh, yeah, it's not a tutorial; it's just a showcase. So yeah, um, this is my uh, this is the laptop that I am actually borrowing from work. Um, so it's not my computer, but uh, it's my configuration. So, it is a Dell XPS, um, I think it's the Dell XPS 13 or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, let's start. So, I'm using the i3 uh, tiling window manager, i3 gaps to be, specifics, to be specific, and what that is, is... Uh, the i3 gaps version lets me have like a gap between windows. Mm. That's basically what it does. Um, so yeah, uh, when I hit the command and enter button, I get a terminal. If I press the command and V button, I change it to uh, vertical mode. And if I press the command button and horizontal button, I change to horizontal mode when I create a new split or open a new program. <clears throat> uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't go through all my key bindings. I don't think that's interesting. But yeah, that's that. Um, and maybe you can see also that I have some sort of. Uh, it's like sort of animated, like things fade out and things are transparent and when I change workspace things are like fading in. Um, I'm using something called Compton for that. Uh, so if I go to my, um, I think I have a like a script here somewhere. Yeah, there's my Compton config. Uh, so if we uh, Let's actually open this in an editor. So I'm gonna go here. So we can see a Compton.conf here. That's the configuration for Compton. And Compton is the thing that makes everything animated. Um, so you can see some basic stuff here like shadow equals true, uh, shadow radius, shadow offset, and menu opacity, blur background exclude, um, Fading true, and there's a bunch of stuff here. I really don't, uh, I don't really understand everything in this configuration myself, to be honest. I think I just copied from someone's GitHub. Um, so yeah, but uh, <clears throat> I'll probably put a, a link to Compton in my um, description. Mm. So that's that, and. Uh, I also have something called Rufy for uh, launching applications. So if I press Command D, uh, I get like a little pop up here where I can like um, where I can type in applications. So if, for example, if I type uh, Chromium, it'll uh, I will get a suggestion for Chromium, and then it will launch. Um, and I can use this launcher wherever I want. So if I go to a new workspace, I can still use it here. Um, yeah, I can launch whatever application I want with. It's basically just a launcher or a... Uh, I'm using it to search for programs and stuff like that, rather than just opening a terminal and launching it in there. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically it. Like when you install i the i3 window manager, uh, it comes with the D menu thing, and it's actually like a search thing that you get up here in the left corner. But uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's as uh, 
beautiful as this launcher. <laughs> uh, and also I'm using like a groove box theme for it. Um, and uh, yeah, groove box is like a color scheme. Um, I actually use it in my uh, Vim config as well. Um, so this is it. It's pretty cool. You can actually see if I if I um, if I cat my dot rc file, you can see here somewhere that the color scheme says. Uh, uh, let's just grep for color. Our color scheme groove box. <clears throat> That's the that's my favorite color scheme actually. I pretty much use it for everything. I think I have it in my terminal as well. So if I go and like do ls, yeah, uh, <laughs> I have it in my uh, terminal as well. And also another thing, uh, let's uh, put some focus on Vim here. So another thing about my Vim configuration is that I use I use like a plugin manager that I created myself but it's sort of based on uh, Vondo. I know many people don't really like Vondo because it's old and there's a newer, um, uh, there's like an, other plugin managers that you can use, but hey, it's, it's, it's working for me and I don't see any reason to switch, so yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm using my own sort of uh, plugin manager on top of that, which sort of act like the apt uh, apt uh, uh, get uh, package manager or the apt package manager um, or sort of like uh, the node package manager or the pacman package manager in Arch Linux um, it's basically a command line and I can install Vim plugins command line so um, <clears throat> for example uh, if I type um, VPM list, uh, oh, VPM list plugins. You can see all the plugins that I have installed on my Vim installation. And for example, if maybe I want to, uh, uh, maybe I want to uninstall tag list, the tag list .vim plugin or something like that. Uh, actually, let's do another one. Maybe I want to uninstall uh, the close tag plugin here. Then I would just do uh, VPM uninstall and the name um, like that and hopefully everything will work well, I have no idea what, let's just uh, <laughs> let's open our other terminal uh, VPM actually let's close screen let's, let's, let's uh, work in this workspace here <laughs> uh, VPM uh, list plugins maybe it's broken I don't know um, um, let's uninstall the, did we have the close tag here? Whoa, so I did uninstall it. Hmm. Weird. Well, so, <laughs> uh, Vim close tags. I'd like to install it again. So if I want to install a Vim plugin, I just copy the name here. And I go here and I do VPM install like that. And it says installing plugin Vim close tag. Like something is obviously pretty broken here because this is not how it used to be acting. Uh, something is really weird with my thing. Vim respond with an error. Uh, no, I have no. Um, like it's there now, but um, like I don't know what's what's going on. Um, oh, actually, I think I know why that is uh, messing with me. Um, <laughs> So I think we need to do this. Uh, and yes, I did open it with Nano because I don't want to open it with Wim right now because I think things are going to be 
break. I think this line here actually is uh, uh, giving us some problems right now. So let's just um, let's just comment that one out for now. Now we should be able to do v VPM list B. Um, let's uninstall it again. Uh, so this is how we how you uninstall plugins. Uh, and that worked great. Uh, so now, if we do VPM list plugins, uh, <clears throat> that plugin will no longer no longer be here. The close tag thing. So grab close tag. Cool. Uh, and now let's say we want to install it again and just do with VPM install, uh, just like that. Oops, just like that. And it will install it, and there we're, uh, we're done. So, yeah, that whole sort of uh, plugin manager, I wrote that myself. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description. It's uh, actually um, uh, written, written in C, um, and this is uh, sort of what it looks like. Uh, So yeah, uh, if you want to go check it out, I'll put a link into in, in my description. Um, but it's uh, it's this um, Vim plugin manager like app npm pacman you see. Um, so yeah, here's a little showcase as well how it works. Um, I mean it's pretty. I pretty much I I like it a lot actually. Um, Basically, the problem it solves is that you don't have to go edit your Vim config every time you want to install or uninstall a plugin. This uh, this program solves that for you, and also runs the Vim install script. So yeah, it can save a lot of time um, if you uh, play around with different plugins a lot. Um, so yeah, so. This is how you install a plugin. This is how you uninstall a plugin. This is how you list install plugins. Um, yeah, it's a very basic program. So yeah, um, what else is there to show? Um, hmm. I mean, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, I do have uh, my. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I can show you my uh, uh, do -do -do cats. Is it this? No. Um, I wanted to. Uh, didn't I have like something? Yeah, that's my terminal config. Um, do, do, do. Oh yeah, um, I have a, like this scripts directory, and usually when I start up my computer, I uh, like I have this script for when I, when I'm at the office at work. I have uh, multiple monitors uh, there, so I run this to like configure all the monitors when I boot up my computer. And when I'm home, I just basically run uh, this one single screen and it just sets up the resolution on the screen to, to a comfortable one. Um, and also uh, this one, the helper script, actually we can, we can look at it. Uh, <clears throat> This is basically just asks me, this script just helps me to do a bunch of stuff when I boot the computer. So for example, if I run it now, it will ask me if I want to uh, like, like this is mostly for the office as well because it asks me to like uh, change the position of the screen and stuff. But, uh, and then I just press yes or no. 
I also, it also asks me if I want to rotate my left screen because I have a screen to my left at the office that is like uh, rotated. Um, so yeah. Um, and here it also asks me to start the Compton diamond. Um, yeah. And that's the, that's the thing that created animations and stuff that I told you about before. Um, and it also asks me if I want to set the background image. So I'm using FEH to set background image. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. I, I don't know what, um, what else to show. Um, I asked, there was actually someone in the comments section that suggested me to make this video. Um, but yeah. I think the links in the description for this video will be most helpful for you. I also have another video about this, like how my configuration is done and um, yeah, but uh, it's that video is a bit old and uh, my configuration doesn't really look like that anymore, but um, yeah. But uh, anyway guys, um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.